Virtual machines are safe, right? At least that's what we're told. A virtual machine being a sandbox environment where we can do kind of whatever we want. A machine within a machine. If I run literally a virus in my virtual machine, because it's contained in the sandbox of VirtualBox, it should be okay, right? In this video, I wanna talk about the magical world of VM exploits. VM exploits meaning an exploit that actually attacks the code in the hypervisor and allows an attacker to go from the VM onto the host machine. They're rare, but they exist and they're pretty crazy. Now, before we do that, we have to talk about today's video sponsor. Today's video sponsor is me. Guys, I honestly believe that if you're a programmer trying to write fast, effective code, or you're a cybersecurity professional trying to stop your stuff from getting attacked, all of these require you to know the basic fundamentals of computers. My courses on the Level Academy teach you languages like C, networking in C, threading in C, assembly, and even a new installment, Rust, to learn the basics of how computers work. And Zero to Hero C programming will teach you the basics of the C programming language, the language that runs all other languages. And you can even learn arrays in C right now for free, go check that lesson out. If you wanna learn assembly, my ARM load operations lesson is also free. And I also have a free three-day C course that you can check out right here on the landing page. Guys, if you want to be a good programmer, you gotta know the fundamentals. And where do you learn the fundamentals? On Low Level Academy. All right, guys, back to the video. See you there. Today we're talking about a VM escape that was found in VirtualBox, right? It attacks the VGA interface for the device. To talk about these, we need to understand the architecture of virtual machines. How does a virtual machine allow code to run in a sandboxed way so that it can't interact with the host OS? Well, through a bunch of really, really cool technology called IOMMU and things inside the CPU that create maps of memory from physical to virtual, we're able to create these environments where the memory of the guest cannot interact with the memory of the host. We can't, for example, run code in the guest OS that can interact with code in the host OS. And this allows us to create the idea of sandboxing where the code can't touch the other code. And we can safely believe that malware that runs inside of a guest can't interact with any of our data, files, or code in the host OS. Now, there is a minor exception when it comes to the architecture of virtual machines. Because at the end of the day, the guest needs to actually interact with a real device. Think your screen, your network adapter, the TPM on your motherboard. There has to be a way for the guest to interact with the host. And this interface is where all of the VM escape bugs live because at the end of the day, any of the code running that interacts with the VM that does the network interfacing or the VGA, the rendering of the video to the screen, that stuff is all just code. And like anything, if there's a vulnerability in that code, an attacker can take advantage of it. And that is exactly what happened in this vulnerability here. VM escape via a VGA device an integer overflow vulnerability exists in, I'm gonna read this very slowly, VM SVGA 3D surface MIP buffer size function. The vulnerability allows an attacker to manipulate a malloc call such that zero bytes are allocated while VirtualBox tracks the size of the buffer as greater than zero. It's really, really crazy how at the end of the day, every attack surface or every, every sandbox is just another attack surface where if the code that makes that sandbox exist is not perfect, an attacker can take advantage of it. What's cool about this one is you have these things called GBOs and MOBs, right? So an MOB is just a memory object in VirtualBox. And then you have GBOs, which are guest backed objects. What this literally is, is a page list of pages that exist in the uh, virtual box hypervisor that are backed by guest memory, right? And so if any interaction between those two is done incorrectly, that could lead to a vulnerability. The nature of this bug is pretty interesting, right? How do you calculate the size of a box? Or obviously it's width times height. Okay, not that complicated. But those values can easily get pretty big if you start requesting things that are a large dimension. And if you're able to do the right math so that the rows look normal and the columns look normal, but the multiplication of those overflows a 32-bit integer, you get a little bit more complicated. Now suddenly the total area of your shape is zero, but the virtual machine still sees the rows and calls as valid values. There's this weird statefulness issue where the state of one part is corrupted, but the state of the other part is valid. And so if you use one of them to do checks and the other to do copies, you make some really weird vulnerabilities. And now because that one surface has technically a zero width, we're able to arbitrarily read past that surface and copy it into our other surface. They call this one transfer surface, which is the one they're gonna request the data for. 
By copying data from one surface, the zero width surface, into a valid surface they call the transfer surface, we then can request to get the readback of that surface via readback sub resource to now get the contents of this surface which contains the contents that was copied out of the zero width surface, which actually just leaks the memory of the kernel. Crazy. So we've, we have via this process leaked from the guest details of the host kernel. This is an ASLR bypass, really, really crazy. It allows us to leak details about the memory map of the host operating system. And so to do the arbitrary write, what they actually end up doing is copying linearly into the buggy surface that has a zero byte buffer. The reason for this bug is they use this value here, the CB row value, to determine how much data to read into the buffer, but don't actually account for how big the buffer is on the back end. So they're going to copy CB row bytes into that buffer, even though the buffer is only zero bytes long. By doing that linear write in the heap, they're able to overflow pointers and then use those pointers to get their arbitrary write. Being able to arbitrary write stuff, they're able to take control of function pointers that live in predictable locations and then control those function pointers to execute arbitrary code. It's just wild. I haven't been able to find a video of anybody exploiting this. I tried for a long time to get this to happen and I just crashed my machine a bunch of times. Um, but what I'm gonna show you instead is a different VM escape vulnerability. This is from a guy named uh, Diego Palacios. I'll put his article that I read before in the video. But basically this is him showcasing a VirtualBox instance running in Linux and how he's able to hop from inside of that VM, outside of the VM and run, I think he runs calc in his host OS. So let's check this out. This one exploits a vulnerability in a network adapter driver. This is in a vert IO driver, but it's the same concept, right? If you have a piece of code that has to get ran in the host OS and there's bugs in it, then you can take advantage of them. So they, he disables the driver for vert IO net inside of the virtual machine. And then he instantiates his personal kernel mode driver that takes advantage of a vulnerability in vert IO net, and then is able to use that to exploit the kernel of the host. It opens uh, gedit.exe from the host OS, not the guest OS. Crazy stuff, dude. Absolutely wild. To successfully exploit these kinds of vulnerabilities is very, very complex. And the likelihood of that happening to you, not very high. But it is something that you should be aware of as attackers get more advanced. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you like this video, do me a favor, hit that sub button. I will see you in the next one.